Media Launch Showmaster Editor is the tool that you use to program Media Launch Showmaster hardware. To access the Showmaster on the network, you use the Showmaster menu and go to the Connect section. And what happens is the Showmaster browser pings the entire network to find any available Showmasters. I have a Showmaster LE sitting on my network, so I'll select it and click the Connect button. What happens next is the Showmaster editor confirms the connection and goes online with the device. Now, anything that you do, you'll notice you are connected to Showmaster LE. So anything that you do, creating devices and whatever, is happening both here and on the Showmaster. So both on your computer and on the Showmaster at the same time. Uh, you have the Devices section. This is where you select a new device. And then from the Type menu, this is where you choose the type of device that you want to control. So we have everything in here from projectors to video players and audio DSPs and displays and all kinds of different things. Uh, and for purposes of this demo, I'm just going to select a, uh, a, a Dataton Watchout, which is a video playback device. So I'll call it Video Playback. And I'm going to say this is for the display cluster, and its IP address is 192.168.1.56. All right, so now I've created the device. The device shows up here in the device section of the project. So if I select the devices node, you'll see all the devices, or you can twirl that menu down, and you see the devices showing up below it. You'll notice that anything that I select in the project browser the contents show up in the Lister tab. Now these tabs can be moved around and placed wherever you want within your workspace, and you can even add and, uh, and manipulate the workspaces. But if I split this horizontally, and I want to put my panels down here, it's all possible uh, to rearrange that. And you, can, and you can set up a new workspace. Once you've just decided that you like a, a particular workspace, you can just call that my workspace, and now I've saved that. I can snap back to different workspace designs, or I'll go back to my workspace one, and it'll flip back to to this. Um, so now, what we were looking at here is that when we select the device in the browse or in the project browser. So if I look at that video playback device, the commands that are available for that device are displayed in the lister. Commands are used in tasks. So if we go to the tasks section, we can create a new task. And there's two types of tasks, a step-based task for logical programming or just step-by-step -step operation, or a timeline. So if we start with a timeline, this is very much like a nonlinear video editor that you might be familiar with. So if I want to do a play command, I just drag and drop the play command onto the timeline. We'll do the same thing with the stop command a little while later. And before we play, we need to load. So we need to know which show we're loading here. So we'll go ahead and load this show. And we'll call that show uh, the main show. So now when the main sh we run the timeline, the main show loads, sends the play command, runs for a little while. And eventually, it hits the stop and sends the stop command to the to the Dataton Watchout. It's a very simple show, uh, but it is a show nonetheless. Next, what we can look at are the variables. Every device, every task, every user screen object has variables that are associated with it. So if I look at the variables node of the device here, you'll see that there are uh, time code variables and status variables and standby variables and all kinds of information that's being automatically uh, pulled by the device driver. Each device driver contains the code to talk to the device and pull it for status and then parse that information into usable human readable uh, information here in the device node. Um, so if we go into another device, we'll create a new one. This one might be a, uh, uh, let's do a video projector. So we'll just grab a, a Barco video projector and we'll call that projector one. And this one's gonna be using a serial port. So instead of an unspecified serial port, I hit select, and then it shows me the serial ports that are available on the Showmaster. So I'm gonna use serial port number two on the Showmaster and hit okay. 
I was going to set up my device, give me the commands that are available for that device and the variables also that are available for that device. So you'll see that there's information about projector lamp hours in which it lamp is, is active and whether it's turned on and brightness and contrast and all kinds of interesting information that you may or might may not find useful, but it is all available for you in the system. So as part of our show, we might need to open and close the shutter. So I'm just going to drag a shutter command here and say this is going to open at that point. And then shortly before the end of the, uh, the, end of the show, let me just scroll over a little bit. Just before we stop our playback, I'm going to close the shutter. So I need to move that and change my property to close. So now I have two devices that are being synchronized together on the timeline. The timeline has a sync accuracy of 1 100th of a second, which means anything that, that gets put on the timeline at the same timestamp, those things all synchronize together, and the very next thing that you can put on there can happen 1 100th of a second later. So you can either synchronize things to happen at the same time or within uh, the, the, the time differential is 1 100th of a second between cues if you want to space them out. Now, it doesn't have to be that close together. You can put them in whatever timing you want. But, uh, but 1 100th of a second is our sync accuracy within the timelines. Uh, Step-based tasks also have a, uh, a 1 100th of a second clock. Let me do this as a projector power on command uh, task. Projector power on. And now I can take my projector device, find the power command, drag it into the step based task, and set my property for on. So now when I execute this task, it will turn on the projector. Now this doesn't have to be just one thing, but you can do it that way. You'll see a lot of one step step based tasks in your project file because of the user interfaces which are delivered on the panels. Panels are delivered as web panels. So the web server the web panel server must be activated to allow web panels. So we need to turn that on. Okay. And now what we've created is a pixel space that can be rendered by a web browser. So by default that pixel space is this size down here, but I'm going to make it uh, enlarged a little bit, so I'll make it 1280 by 768. So you see that the, the rectangle over here on my panels uh, editor has increased. Now we can right click and create a new user screen, and this is a floating user screen that is rendered within that web browser as a movable window. We can make that a single window with no border, we can put a border on it, or we can make it a full screen uh, user screen. So I'm just going to leave it as a movable window and we can draw, uh, we can put a background on there. So we click the background, we can change the color here, we'll make it a nice dark blue. And then we can draw some objects on that, such as a button. Maybe we'll make this button green. Or maybe make the down position of the button, or the on position of the button, a lighter green. And we'll say play show as the text on that. I want that to be a little bit bigger text. Oops, too big. So we'll stretch that bigger. There we go. So now when I play the show, I want to trigger that play show task, or that, that main show task. Uh, but I also want to see some information coming back. So I'm going to take a... Uh, a text display, it's this guy right here, and I'm going to call this my TV for text display uh, show time code. So like I said, just like devices have variables, so do tasks. So if I look at the variables under that task one, I'm going to grab my time code variable and drag and drop it into that text display. So what I've done is when the variable changes, I'm going to update this text display. That's what that drag and drop operation means. What it does in the back end is it creates a new step-based task, names it, and assigns a start condition to it, saying when task one's timecode variable changes, execute this task. 
the task executes and the first item and only item in there is an expression that says TD show timecode dot text so that the text variable of my timecode text display is going to take the value of the timecode variable from that timeline task. So now we can do something else. We can take that timeline task and drag and drop it onto the play button. Now it's assigned a button one status equals one and button one status has changed. So the start condition is now button one status has the value one and button one status has changed, which means when I click this, it's going to trigger the task one task to play. So if we go into debug mode here and I click on my button, it triggers the task to run. You can see the time code is running and if I flip over to the timeline, you can see that it is running. Now all of that is also being rendered out as a web page. So let me go open up a web browser here and I'll just uh, 127.001. Select my web panel. And you'll see that the panel has been drawn within the web browser. So if I click the play button, you'll see that the timecode display does update. So this is how you'll be deploying your user interfaces for controlling things on uh, on touch screen interfaces throughout your system because there's no output uh, for video on the Showmaster. There's no way of having a user interface on the box. You have to deploy them through this web panel interface. If you want to trigger a, uh, a task like turning on the projector, so VT projector on. We already have that projector on task. We could either just drag and drop that onto here, and then that assigns the button to the start condition of that task. Put some text on that. Uh, or if I want to do a projector off, I'll draw another one here. Et projector off. Projector off. And we'll take that projector power command and drag the power command onto the button. So now what that's doing is because this is a command and not a variable, I want to execute this command when I press that button. So it's creating another step-based task, assigning the start condition of the task to be VT projector off status has a value one and projector off status has changed. So when I click it, but only when I click it, so if I hold it, it's not going to re-execute. Uh, I'm going to send the power command with the off parameter set. So that's how you would create buttons that would be triggered by a, uh, or that would trigger commands that are sent to a device and you have a button that would trigger a task and you have a variable that will update a text display or a user screen object. So now what do we do if we've got devices that we need to control but they're not in our list of drivers? Well we have a tool for that. We have the Medialon Low Level Communicator. Medialon Low Level Communicator is, let's just use this for another type of projector maybe, uh, this is an intimidating looking user interface, but it's really not all that scary. This is for building drivers for serial, TCP as a client or server, UDP, or MIDI. So our network protocols, our MIDI protocols, and serial protocols are all rolled into one general purpose tool where you can write your own commands, uh, write your own drivers to communicate with devices. But we also do have a bunch of drivers preloaded in the tool as well. So if you look in here, you can see that there's things for uh, uh, DSPs and projectors and matrix switchers and even, even slide projectors in here. Um, so if we want to take a uh, an, an LCD monitor, for instance, we can select that 
and that loads the driver into the low-level communicator and then you can look at the commands and you can see oh we've got commands for power on and power off if you look at them you can see this is how they're constructed and in Medialon low-level communicator hexadecimal is by default denoted by an exclamation point followed by the two digits. So exclamation 0D would be a carriage return. Um, but you can change what that delimiter is. The hexadecimal character is an exclamation point, but you can make it a dollar sign or a tilde or whatever you want it to be. Uh, you just need to make sure that if you change it here, that you change it in your commands as well. Uh, monitoring variables are also possible. This is where you would create variables that are automatically parsed by the, uh, by the low-level communicator uh, for instance, if you're asking a projector or a display for its power state, you would put in a periodic request frame here, and you would add in a variable that parses the return information. Let me see if I can find an example in one of these other drivers. Uh, let me grab a Christie projector, for instance. Uh, and this one does have a periodic request frame of CR0, carriage return. And what comes back is projector status, lamp time, and projector input. So if we look at the way that's constructed, when we get back the status, it's sending back a single byte followed by a carriage return. And we're going to interpret that as one or zero, basically saying that is the, uh, that is the status. Lamp time, CR1, going to send back four bytes with a carriage return. So we, when it sends back four bytes, we interpret that uh, as, uh, as an integer value calculated by high-low bytes, meaning that the most significant byte is first and goes to the right, um, and it will be immediately updated as an integer. And if we do the projector input, that will probably be off of CR3. Okay. And it's another single byte integer, so it's just going to tell you which uh, which input it is, one, two, three, four, on that device. So this is kind of a simple version of that. Let's see if there's a more complicated device in here. Uh, we'll look at PJ Link. That's a that's a complicated one. So power status, it's going to return back. A percent sign one PWR equals an unknown byte and a carriage return. Now you notice that, that highlighted byte, that's the byte that we're paying attention to in this pattern of information that's coming back. That's not actually going to come back with an X in it, it's going to come back with a, a zero, one, two, three, etc. Um, and when that zero, one, two, or three comes back, how do we interpret that? Well, because those have different meanings and we know that there are only a fixed number of them, we can interpret that as an enumerated variable, an enum. When you have an enum, you can identify that over here. So you can assign, when, it, when I receive a zero, that means off. When I receive a one, it means on. When I receive a two, that means it's cooling down. When I receive a three, it means it's warming up. So the enum is defined over here on the right-hand side, um, but it's pulling its information out of whatever X you put in here and highlight, uh, and everything else in that frame has got to be exactly the same, and it knows that that's the frame that we're that we're interpreting that specific byte out of to pull this information out of to define the value of our power status variable. So now when we go in here, we now have our projector two with its variables, and it's got all these. Uh, all these variables associated with it, each one of them is being uh, has is being pulled and parsed by the low-level communicator. And if we look for that uh, for that power status variable, where would it be? Let's filter this here. Power status. Now you can see that there's the various on-off cooling and warming up statuses that are available because of the definition of that variable as an enum. So low-level communicator is a very powerful tool for you to be able to read and write your own, uh, read, read back variables and write commands that you can then use uh, in, the, in the project. So if I wanted to do a projector command, well, I've already got a projector button here. Let's just remove this.
So I've already got this projector on task, so we're going to edit that task. And I'm just going to take the projector on command from my projector 2 and add it to that as well. So now it's projectors on, essentially. Uh, so we could just rename that projectors on projectors on and there you go easy as easy as that so that's how you would create a device to control uh, to control something that we don't have a driver already pre-built for um, and then lastly we've got to send this project file over to the showmaster now in the meantime while I was doing this something happened on my network and I lost my connection to the showmaster which is fine I just need to save my projects we're just going to go over here and save as, save my first project. And we'll save this on the desktop. Save as. And now when we connect to our show master, then we can send the project to the showmaster. In here, you can also change the configuration of the showmaster, including changing the name or setting an, setting an IP address on the network interfaces. You can even set up log traces in here if you want to log information about what is happening in the system, you'll be able to pull that back out. You can set the date and time of the show master, and you can even set passwords for the connection and for the firmware update on the show master. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that right now because it makes the show master reboot, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect. So something happened on my network. I've been having a little bit of trouble on my network. So send my project. Oh, I keep losing the connection. Connect to my showmaster. Now that I'm connected, I can send my project. And I can disconnect from the showmaster. And now when I've disconnected from the showmaster, we can actually communicate with the web panel on the showmaster directly rather than going through localhost on my machine. Now let's just scan the network once again. So it's 1.116 so that we know where to look with our web browser, 21681.116, and load up that web panel, and now we can play the show on the Showmaster hardware itself.